from Messi. Oh, what a goal it is! Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Bola Bola Show podcast. This week, we're looking at from a very different angle of football. As you all know, in the Bola Bola Show, we have covered so many aspects of football. We covered women's football, men's football. We've interviewed international coaches, players, former legends. I mean, basically everybody. But there is another aspect of football which is very important that needs to be highlighted and needs to be talked very much a lot, in my opinion. And that is recreational football and grassroots football. And for that, I can't think of anyone else better than our guest today, none other than Carl from Parang Bola Sepa. Welcome to the podcast, my friend. Thank you for having me again. Uh, oh my God, it's been, uh, I think the last time I was on for, with you guys was the 10-year anniversary of the 2010 year Suzuki Cup. Year yes, I, yep, that was the, the, exactly that episode you were there. Mm. Okay. So how's it going on with you, Carl, lately? I mean, tell us. You know, what's the latest with regards to Carl and Parang Bola Sepa? With regards to Carl, uh, on a personal basis, things can be better. We do our best to control things within our uh, vicinity of control. Lah. But mm-hmm. in terms of uh, Parang Bola Sepa, uh, because of the pandemic in the last two years, I've really taught us a lot of things, uh, mm-hmm. personally and professionally. Mm-hmm. So itulah, we try to do our best to keep going and growing. Uh, mm-hmm. But itulah, this Omicron wave has really jumbled up a lot of our mental yep, and yep. emotional fatigue. Lah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. And just for our listeners out there, you know, uh, the numbers are going up again. Let's, you know, you know, do our part. Keep the, follow the SOPs. Make sure you guys get vaccinated. Those who haven't, get your booster. Those who haven't. And most important of all, you know, you know let's keep, keep, uh, keep everybody safe and all that. All right? So, exactly. Let's jump into the first question. Perhaps we can start with in your give us the simple definition that you can give us, Carl. With reg- what is grassroots and recreational football? Okay. Uh, do cut me off if I, if I go on a long tangent. Okay. So <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> okay. So uh, grassroots football. So a uh, few years ago, before the pandemic, everything started. Uh, mm-hmm. We met up with FAM actually. Uh, they hit the then head of grassroots football department, which was uh, Mr. Samuel Sue. Mm-hmm. So Samuel has uh, reached out to myself, uh, Bobai, uh, Food Souls, uh, and many other communities. And then we, we had a very nice uh, dialogue about how we can work together, incorporate things, and uh, provide football for all. Mm-hmm. Then during our uh, opening uh, salvo of discussions, uh, he actually shared with us the definition of uh, grassroots football, which mm-hmm. is uh, F- FAM follows... Uh, AFC with the definition of uh, the Asian Football Confederation the definition of grassroots football. Mm-hmm. So you can actually go to the AFC, uh, the Asian Football Confederation in your website. Mm-hmm. The definition for grassroots football is non-elite, non-professional football. Mm-hmm. So everything from social football, amateur football, uh, even uh, to a certain sense, uh, beach soccer is, uh, is, 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 is a part of grassroots football. So FAM adopts the same uh, definition uh, of uh, grassroots of what is grassroots football. Uh, mm-hmm. any, any listeners out there, uh, again, uh, that uh, last time I checked was last year, so it, it could change by year to year. So any listeners out there want to check and correct me on social media, you may well do so. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that is the definition. So ever since Samuel, uh, Mr. Sam, brother Samuel uh, shared that, we've, we adopted uh, that after speaking to the PDS team and also our NGO recreation uh, committee on the definition, we decided, okay, we're going to uh, continue with the name grassroots so that's why and also i instructed my admin who has been taking care of the padam Sepat social media accounts since may of 2020 mm-hmm. to use grassroots grassroots not only for football but also for sports uh recreational football is uh, basically a subsection of grassroots football so you have to think of it as like uh, a pyramid lah. so grassroots is memang kat, kat bottom sekali lah. mm-hmm. so inside the bottom foundation uh, not bottom like the foundation of the pyramid. Uh, mm-hmm. that's uh, it, 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 the totality of it is grassroots football. Then inside that, there's uh, social football, there's uh, uh, recreational football, amateur football, there's community football. Uh, we have mm-hmm. to remember that uh, everyone in Malaysia uh, has their own definition of what grassroots football is. So we cannot uh, pergi as conquerors mm-hmm. and just tell them like, oh, you have to adopt our uh, 
our, our definition of what is recreational, what is so, so, and so, because everyone has their own definition, kan? Mm-hmm. I think in the future, it is for now, it's okay, but later on down the line, I think football sports authorities really need to clarify what is the definition of A, B, C, D, E, lah. So, so I mean uh, hmm. to I mean uh, to put it in from in PBS punya focus I would say grassroots is more on anything to do with non professional side of football correct 110% mm okay mm. okay all right all right so recreational the subsection that we are focusing on recreational sports is basically uh, when we started to do uh, programs on the ground futsal football uh, and so on and so forth we realized that people who plays with us do not like the term social football. Uh, reason being, there's a, there's a stigma towards uh, social football, meaning uh, for them, they don't consider it as fun. The reason why they don't consider it as fun is because uh, because of, when we look at a Malaysian football near ecosystem and pyramid, people who really have desire to go professional, they don't have any outlets to go. Mm-hmm. So where they go for the outlet is social football. And people who just want to go play for fun, they don't have that opportunity when they play uh, uh, social leagues and so on and so forth. So that's why uh, social. When you when you look at those viral videos, Motu social football can be very intense and serious. Mm. So we are trying to create an alternative. So uh, we played out with the names lah, like, macam or do we call it community football? Then we realized that the word recreational is very new. Mm-hmm. Uh, recreacy is very new, very fresh. Uh, so we. Uh, reverse engineer the name lah, so much okay, recreational, recreational. So, and then what does it come? What what does it mean to be recreational football? Uh, so the much a technical definition of recreational football for us is that we have no tackle rule. So we adopted it from from Mumbai. So mm-hmm. for the people who wants to play with us, uh, we discourage tackling. Uh, so basically, it keeps everyone safe because when when things started to become negative, so the whole atmosphere changes. So we try to avoid. As many, uh, macam, apa? many, uh, apa, magnetic lightning rod of mm-hmm. incidents lah. Uh, mm-hmm. so we encourage a lot more passing, more participation. Our uh, pool of people that we that 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 we get to play pool, macam it's all diverse. Uh, we mm-hmm. have people kaki bangku, husband and wives. Mm-hmm. Uh, everyone from from so so basically uh, so many this people. is. So basically, this is one area where no all these Roy Keane and Patrick Patrick Vieira want to be no chance lah. Basically, it's Correct. not for them lah. <laughs> right, because through through our our interaction with all these people, uh, our, our our participants we call them, uh, they share with us that uh, it's it's very consistent. The only time they are allowed to play football or futsal or any other sports is through their friend. Uh, is through their school alumni, uh, their friends, their work colleagues, or their family members. So four outlets. Uh, that they get to do, or the fifth one is they organize themselves lah. So they never had an opportunity to go for an alternative because the first four, when they get invited to play, they usually dapat macam like a sarcastic warning lah, like hey, you have to perform. If not, you won't get invited next week. So that 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 already discourages <laughs> them from playing. So uh, as Padang Bola Sepak, Bobai, and other initiatives like Brand New Wave, Bola Bola. Uh, 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 bola bola uh, TK Krone, uh, w, uh, the women's social football and all. Mm-hmm. They all create. They all creating their, their own version of what is social football, what is recreational football. Mm. So, as long for me, as long as they are encouraging more and more people to participate, and their programs getting wider and wider, and with more quality, uh, you are getting more people to participate in sports. That's a win for us, like that. That's a win for everyone. Mm-hmm. I mean, this, this actually reminds me of my own personal experience I, I can share with you. Uh, I used to join this one particular group to play futsal, I mean, and mainly because uh, my, my ex-boss uh, arranges these, these uh, occasions. So, you know, I basically joined him like, after work. And I did re- realize, you know, their definition, I mean, of course, the whole idea is to have fun. But I did kind of realize, like, if I don't make that 50% tackle, and if I don't go for the a short charge for the ball, they tend to get quite annoyed and you know can can see from their uh, body language from their expression like they're quite pissed off with me mm. but you see because at the end of the day we are just playing there for fun it's not right. you know win or lose it's, it doesn't matter it's just you know just, just basically to keep our body healthy and all that that's about it right uh, but but then I, when I think carefully you know I can understand where these guys are coming from because these are former school team players play, people who have competitive uh, uh, who been in that competitive environment? So they, I, I think they have not left that environment. Even though today they are not actually professional players, couple, just 
Yes, aja macam orang kita bekerja and then after that evening, you know, when they got time to go play futsal. But I think that desire inside them hasn't really left even right. after all these years. So I would say, you know, that kind of place is just not for me because, you know, I, I I'm more of a believer that at the end of the day, you know, it's not about tackling or, you know, getting injuring ourselves and putting ourselves at risk. It's more of having a good time, having a laugh and, you know, just enjoying the game. I mean, would you agree that? Yeah, one hundred percent. We have to look. We have to look at very uh, areas of the psychology and the social side. Uh, for one, I agree with you because, like, in the end, for us as organizers, we want people to go back home happy, uh, injury free, mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually injury free. That's our objective as organizers. However, on the other side of the coin, those your your friends and also my friends you got who are very much um apa uh, wakis kola and apa semua tu. I do feel for them because like they have they are going through unprocessed traumas, you know, because uh, they uh, I'm pretty sure there are some people who can ACL and then they never have a chance to to go uh, a level above or whatever. So it's really uh, much um question lah that much um there are people uh, our friends out there who haven't uh, checked in with their traumas and begun to heal. Uh, because one one thing that uh, the one review that uh, I I really enjoyed uh, getting while, while doing all this organization uh, organizing all these programs is that we are apparently a rehab center for the soul to play football again. So for uh, you know we had one player uh, one participant playing with us who plays on a on a certain level some more too. They come and play with us, but they run a rehab balik the Romania spirit. Uh, so I don't know if you watched that last show, Stephen, but there was one uh, season two of the episode, kan, uh, where mm-hmm. uh, you know a player, a professional player, couldn't couldn't really like uh, couldn't check out from his mind. So the the ex veteran, like, shows uh, that, that 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 the the team leader on like, oh, when I'm having a rough patch, I go back down and play for fun because football is supposed to be fun. It's a game, you know. In the words uh, of Gordon Bombay. Yeah. So. <laughs> Definitely, one hundred percent. So, but um, you need to have that fun again, lah. So, in a way, but um, do really concern, lah. But um, like some of our friends out there who play all out, all out, they might have some unchecked, unresolved trauma that they may have growing up. You know, maybe they have disappointed their family, their themselves, and the teachers more too. So, it's a uh, it's a very perspective in your things, lah. You know, on our end, you got we just want to play for fun, apa semua tu. We we may we may get backlash, apa semua tu. But I'm going on and on here. <laughs> uh, so to large thing here. So there's there's many angles that we have to accept and acknowledge. And how do we heal, uh, apa heal people from the traumas and also get people to enjoy balik bola sepak. Uh, not only for themselves but for for community. You know, create networks and so on mm-hmm. so forth. You okay. know, I I I bet you if you were to ask uh anyone who created any of these communities, they would have said that. Finding a community, participating in community, has helped them spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and even uh, to a certain extent, uh, a job. Because out of all the WhatsApp groups that that, that all the social leads and social teams are there, confirm are there a few people who always extend opportunities of jobs and careers up to uh, to to their WhatsApp group, and then they have helped one or another person uh, finding a job. So that's like the, the the indirect effect of doing something very positive in the community, lah. Mm-hmm. Mm. And what were the initial challenges or difficulties that you faced in order to get this community together? Uh, I, oh, uh, very good question. Um, it's it the challenges. Um, to be honest, when we when we started our first uh program, like right after the 2016 Slango Champions League, when we did our first futsal session, we didn't really have a, like a like a like a grand strategy. It's more of like, oh, we we have 10k followers. Let's just invite 20 to 30 people. Just play for fun. You know, back then too, we didn't really have a definition of fun. So we just let the fluidity of the situation flow. At the same time, talk to people, talk to the to the, to the participants. What do they want out of uh, out of our programs? You know, do they want to be uh, do, do they want to have consistent exercise? Uh, do they want to make new friends? Do they want to do this or that? Whatever. So we just took it. Me and Isham, uh, my apa, our 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 uh, NGO me uh, chairman, right now, uh, we 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 spoke about it, and then obviously the committee grew and grew, and then we realized that in the end, just people want an outlet to play for fun. Uh, they want to feel, make themselves feel good, and they want to express their love for the game, mm-hmm. uh, through friendships and all. And obviously, the difficulty is actually in the start, not knowing what we actually are heading. But after that, we re- we realize that we have something. Then it's 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 about 
coming together, putting the brains together and like, okay, uh, hearts and minds and decide, okay, what's the direction of which motive? And then like for me, I really hit myself hard when there's an injury uh, to any participant because I feel that I let that person down because mm. that person, because I've been there, you know, mm. uh, I've, I've, I've gotten injured several times playing futsal, football, no one taking, was taking care of me. Uh, so macam I, I tell, I promise myself, Okay, look, uh, anyone participates first, apa semua tu, kena injury semua tu, we send them back home. We make sure that they get back home safely. Mm-hmm. You know, there was one instance, there's this player, uh, he kena ACL. Uh, no one no one was around him. He just, he just tersalatin on the pitch. And he lived all the way, like, uh, he lived about 20 kilometers away from, from the venue and he came through public transport. So oh, I felt okay. bad. Mm-hmm. I felt really bad. And then we, we decided... Uh, me, Izham, a uh, few others, uh, Iskandar, uh, and and few others lah. We decided, okay, we're gonna we're gonna drop him back. So we, we got him to the car, go back to his uh, home lah. So those are kind of things that we want to make sure that we have the 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 the, the, the well being of our participants right on. So after that, we decided, okay, look, uh, let's uh let's let let's uh, let let's adopt Bobby's no tackle rule. It's gonna be it can take some time. Some people are not gonna like it. But in the end, ultimately, it's all about making sure the environment and the atmosphere for people participating is safe. You know, uh, that's the first step. And then obviously, as, as, as we go and grow, there are other challenges that, that, that comes in. You know, how do we deal with issues of, of people being egoist, egoistic? How do we, de- how do we deal with uh, a situation when some people are sexist or even racist or, or whatever? You know, mm-hmm. So we take it on a step by step new approach. At the same time, have the uh, have the forward thinkingness on uh, try to prevent any of the situation coming come, uh, coming up lah. So we do have like uh, when people participate, they uh, when people sign up on our website, we have like our seven philosophies. You know, respect, integrity, integration, and so on and so forth. Uh, participation and, and a lot lah. Uh, mm-hmm. We adopted it from the Cruyff Foundation. Been here ten principles. Mm, so okay. Uh, so we we make sure uh, that much um people who sign up understands when when they break the laws we will completely ban them. Mm, so okay. we 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 can be forgiving but we also can be harsh. Mm-hmm. Mm, so to uh to 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 sum it up to to sum up your your, your to answer your question in a very good summary it's a learning process. Uh, better I can know all the mistakes so that. Uh, and also learn from it so that the next person who comes in after me uh, can, can, can take all the lessons that we have learned and take it further than me because I do always believe that the next person after Carl from Padang Malaysia Park taking over is going to take Padang Malaysia Park to an entirely new level the, the incoming team lah. Mm-hmm. okay hmm. wonderful wonderful and you just mentioned about the Selangor Champions League which in my opinion having seen from what I've seen on YouTube and all these other various platforms I would say it's been one of the most successful stories with regards to grassroots or community football. I just want to know how did this idea came about actually? <laughs> okay, boleh, boleh. Uh, so what happened was uh, in 2016, um, Karel Anwar, the owner of the Klang Valley League, uh, gave me a call uh, while I was working at a, at a library. He was like, hey, um, the Stick of Sangu Champions League, they were in week two. They were in week two of the competition. And they're like, hey, we need pundits to come watch the game and give a, give their insights on, on what what is the game up with motor. I said, okay, no problem. Then I rang up uh, my friends, uh, Isham, Henry, Yuhan, and uh, CK from Sons of Pictures. They're also a podcast channel. Uh, so I told them, hey, there's something going on. Blah, 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 blah. Let's go. Okay, so we went to New Camp Bandar Tama, and then we were briefed by Dr. Johan and Salfi Badri and Karen Anwar and Kamil. Uh, about uh, Iskandar and a few other people about what the competition is all about semua tu and it's like okay that's cool so the competition uh, was organised by the Selangor Youth Community which is a organisation run by His Royal Highness uh, Tengku Amir Shah uh, RMS the Raja Muda Selangor of Selangor uh, the Raja Muda of Selangor Tengku Amir Shah so uh, they uh, you know spoke with the community they 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 did their, their due diligence and all and they decided to unify uh, take the, the champions lah the champions from from the social leagues uh, in Klang Valley, uh, basically, uh, and and just and just and just compete lah, uh, compete in a, a compete and celebrate football, mm-hmm. essentially. So it became the Selangor Champions League. So it's eight. It was eight teams. Uh, sorry, it was sixteen teams. One of them is PIB, who is currently inside M three. So mm-hmm. PIB FC inside M three in twenty twenty two started uh, in Selangor Champions League twenty sixteen. 
a uh, little bit of fun fact for everyone lah. Uh, so um, what does PIB stands for by the way? Uh, Persatuan Ibu Bapa. Okay, because I work for a company called PIB. So oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Persatuan Ibu Bapa. Oh, no, right. Okay, okay. Yeah. So uh, what happened was um, so the competition took off up to two. Then the finals happened. Uh, the, the the quarterfinals happened in uh, MPSJ. Uh, semi-finals also happened in Stadium MPSG. Then the finals happened in sta- uh, in Stadium MPSG lah, and it was about eighty uh, percent turnout uh, of the capacity. Uh, so it was really it was something that like we were on to something. Uh, so at that game, I was commentating the finals. It was quite bad. Uh, I then obviously ever since two thousand sixteen, Selangor Champions League things started to to grow and roll, uh, and then it became a football Selangor, uh, basically an arm. Of Selangor Youth Community's uh, health and sports punya division, mm-hmm. uh, so football Selangor became like uh, basically a non-official governing entity of 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 football in Selangor, lah, kan? Mm-hmm. Because usually the complaints of the previous FA FA Selangor Mi administration is because uh, their leagues weren't really highlight on websites, was weren't publicized well, it was a very short league and so on and so forth, lah, kan? Mm-hmm. So in a way, it's it's like a, it's trying to mirror and also improve what. What should be done in in uh, in the state of Selangor, and then uh, the Selangor Champions League 2017 happened. Uh, the winner of that competition went uh, to the FA Cup, which was actually Axis O2. Uh, I remember during the Selangor Football Day uh, uh, convention. I would, yeah, I would say it's a bit of a convention in the Damansara Performing Arts Centre uh, back in uh, February 2017. Uh, we uh, there was a lot of panelists, uh, which was Kiraj Gopal, the then CEO of uh, FMLLP uh, be- before MFL was was called FM uh, uh, before MFL was uh, MFL. It was uh-huh. FMLLP. So uh, around that time, uh, uh, Arsenal was facing a non-league team. Uh, if everyone recalls around that time. Uh, so I posed the question. Uh, so uh, so me, Doctor Joe, uh, Salfi. Muzamil from Smiwola before before the whole uh, thing started, uh, weeks before that we we uh, uh, around that time when went to the time days before it started, we actually decided okay why don't we ask Kevin this this question, uh, can will there be a future for non league teams to participate in the Malaysia FA Cup? Ah, mm-hmm. uh, so in in line with the UK FA Cup, lah, kan? I mean, correct. we have all the non-league teams. In, yeah, okay, okay. Ah, correct. Uh, correct. So we asked that question to Kevin, and Kevin gave a very very good answer. Then, in eventually, uh, Doctor Joe and Muzamil uh con- continue on meeting with with Mister Kevin Ramalingam, and eventually, uh, the winner of the Selangor Champions League two thousand seventy was became the first club to participate in in Nila, in mm-hmm. the uh, first community club to uh. To, to participate in the FA Cup, right? and if you remember, if you recall, around 2017, guys, even mm-hmm. if you go back to Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and the word community, well, I say, but community was very big. You know, mm-hmm. back then yep. we had uh, Shalam Antlers, Subayang yes. Semenjaya City, then the yep, uh, yep. Apa, BNM played, uh, all these team played in yep. uh, Bukit Jalil, the new mm-hmm. Bukit Jalil. Yeah, yeah. So it started something nice, lah. Like, then 2018 came, uh, the FA Cup, apa semua tu settle, then. Uh, and then the elections happened. Then uh, FA Sango was uh, was taken was uh, FA Sango uh, apa, uh, led by Tuanku. Then Tuanku brought in Doctor Joe and and so on and so forth. Like then the torch was passed to Izri Nabil, uh, who is the current uh, FAS miss. So right now Sango, uh, as everyone know, has gone private. It's uh, there's a there's a the the, the split of like okay Sango FA is led by Izri Nabil, the set gen, the current set gen of of Sango. Then Uh, Selangor FC is Dr. Johan, mm-hmm. uh, is the CEO. So uh, Nabil has taken over since then, uh, and he has done a fantastic job uh, since then. So uh, Selangor Champions League basically is it, trying to solve the problems uh, in grassroots football, and uh, obviously, and in 2018 they introduced uh, apa, fantasy football, which I uh, which I helped out in 2018 and to uh, end 2019. Then 2019. Uh, the, obviously, as, as the competition grew, and then 2018 the final, uh, it was uh, Puchong Fraser versus KRU. KRU stands for Kampung Raja Uda Port Klang. Mm-hmm. Yep, I know okay. that place. Mm-hmm. Yep. So that that was the final, and that final was really good because each uh, Puchong Fraser, if I recall correctly, they bought about uh, 2,000 fans, and uh, KRU bought about 1,005, but more more or less the same as. Uh, Puchong Fraser. So it was a very nice atmosphere in 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 Alam. Uh, 
uh, Pujang Freza won 2-0 if I recall correctly. Uh, one of the goals is from uh, Afiq Azmi, uh, mm. the former national team player. So in a way, uh, grassroots football, uh, you know, lower tier f- football, non-league football, non-professional league football, can help revitalize professional players in their careers, provide opportunities to youth players uh, who 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 uh, who are not who are not a part of this of the of this of the uh, traditional system. Mm-hmm. You know, wait, so wait. Uh, yeah, so go, 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 go. Yeah, so in a sense, Sangu Champions League is you know solving a lot of really interesting problems. Mm-hmm. Um, so I do hope that you know other states do have their own initiatives like 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 what uh, Sangu Champions League does. If everyone, uh, if if your if the listeners are uh, 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 recall, uh, football Selangor started out as an like a like a NGO first, then they slowly uh, took over uh, Evolve, uh. Selangor. Yeah, so so it's that's an evolution. So things do take time. Do start out, you know, with with honest and responsible intentions of wanting to help football, and sooner or later change can happen. So mm-hmm. Selangor. It's a perfect example, lah. In my opinion, I know that I'm sounding like a Slango fanboy, apa semua tu. But you know, but what they have done for not only Slango football, but for Malaysian football, Malaysian sports, especially mm-hmm. during the pandemic, you know, credit must be due uh, to to the team at FA Slango. Mm-hmm. I mean, would you say that? Uh, I mean, of course, like what FA Slango is doing with the Slango Champions League and all that. I know always, you know, state FAs get a lot of criticism because they seem to focus too much on the professional team and, and then there is almost zero attention given to grassroots, community football and all that, which is the foundation of any football pyramid system. Mm. At least Lama FA is doing something. Would you say that this is in a way, I don't know, sort of like filling up that vacuum that is not being given so much attention? Correct, 100%. Uh, Selangor FA, I would say, is the benchmark, you know? Is the benchmark of what a state association in Malaysia should be doing, you know. Uh, not only uh, I mean, like just recently they they did the women's super league. Yeah, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. as as straightforward as that, they're they're doing a lot of initiatives to ensure that you know, uh, it, it not only helps Slango but it helps Malaysia in the long run. Mm-hmm. So, uh, in a way, there has to be you know communications, a uh, communication team building. Uh, with, with within the state associations and uh, state associations and also in, you know state associations should be empowering uh, people who are doing good work you know like Slango FA they empower leagues uh, and and teams uh, to to become better mm-hmm. you know like for example a criteria that you have to be a part of uh, the Slango Champions League is that you do have to have a social media so that you know everyone can can uh, everyone can help market each other mm-hmm. uh, that's one example you know, another example is uh, make sure that every team is registered uh, under the ROSA so that at least something, uh, at least you are a professional governing in your team mm-hmm. and so on and so forth. So uh, there's a lot of things. And also, too, like, I can go on and on and on, and on about <laughs> Slango, the, 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 the greatness of Slango FA. Uh, but too, like, 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 the downside of it is that grassroots football will, ne- will, it's difficult for grassroots football to get the budget that we that that collectively the whole of Malaysia needs, and uh, not only grassroots football, grassroots sports essentially, mm-hmm. because it's not uh, charming enough. I wanted to say another word, but it's not charming enough for investors. So it's all about it's up to us to do our best to keep it uh, to to make sure uh, it's uh, responsible, it's charming, it's lucrative, it's attractive uh, for people who are orang atas lah. But at the same time, the when, when we try to knock on the door, not only uh, for, for FA Slango, but you know, for PBS, uh, Mobile, uh, Bola Bola Samosa, and all, uh, New Waves, all these communities, you know, you know pe- orang atas can recognize uh, that we are doing work on the ground and we are trying mm-hmm. to uh, solve problems of the country through sports, you know. Macam Daddy Night, uh, I've initially asked me, what do I want to see in my lifetime? I told him, I want to solve problems through football, mm-hmm. you know, social social problems, economical problems, education, health, and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm. exactly. And of course, you know, you, you mentioned about, you know, I mean, basically you did mention about uh, Shalang Antlers earlier. I'm always amazed with the, the fact that all these amateur clubs, you know, I, I've seen Kerti FC, Raja Permain, they seem to have all these progressive mind people in, involved in football. But I always wonder, wh- why aren't these people involved at the higher level? Like, where are they missing at the higher level? I mean, I, I always ask this question to myself. They are there. But some other people at the top don't seem to recognize this talent. 
I think it's about time. They need to open up their eyes and see that talents is available. It's time for us to pull them up and bring them in. Don't you agree? I agree. Uh, however, uh, you know, like on one hand, uh, you know, budget ada ke tak nak hire these people and making sure that they, uh, their, their lives are balanced. Mm. You know, football can be very demanding, correct? But yep. at the same time, you know, for me as a person who is taking care of people, uh, you have to try to be mindful that some people actually have lives. You, we cannot intrude them 24-7. So, mm, you got to have that, 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 that ni lah. So, I think budget is one element. And also another element, you know, macam salah. If, 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 I were, if I was born in a, certain, in, a, in a certain generation, or if I were to grow up in a certain environment, and then there are people guarding for my for my for my position yeah i would i would i would make sure that i don't empower them mm -hmm. you know okay. it took it took it took it took if i'm from a different generation from a different environment lah because you want to jaga your period nasi kan mm -hmm. you know you're a bit afraid of who are these people can these people semua tu so sometimes it's a bit short sighted apa semua tu lah but if you're you know long term progressive ni tu semua tu you would definitely invite them to come in and macam like, okay how do we whatever whatever Sometimes, yeah, sometimes I, I do have this realization for myself, you got for PBS. I cannot be Panawala Sepak forever. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to give, give up my position as the founder. You know, mm -hmm. I will still be the founder, you know, Sumoto, but as the person who managed the operations, the, uh, the section of the, of, the, of, the, of the NGO and so on and so forth, I cannot be there forever. You know, macam, sometimes, kalau bila I overstay my way uncle, nanti I, I'm no good as, as a dictator. Mm, true, true. You know? So I have to you know, create the night as best as, as the foundation as possible and leave it for the next person to grow it even better than me. And I can just, uh, you know, that, 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 that saying lah, macam, uh, wise men plant trees uh, so, uh, or that they, they can't sit underneath it, kan? Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, uh, tell us some good news about Selangor Champions League. I heard there's some good news this year. Bring it on, man. Oh, uh, there's two Selangor Champions League this year. Wow. Okay. Yeah. There's two Selangor Champions League years. There is this. Or the first one is kicking off on. Uh, depending on when this uh, recording is going to be posted. Okay. So okay. we're starting on the 26th of February 2022. Okay. Uh, okay. Ending just before Raya. So it's it's a bit of a compact and compressed Selangor Champions League. Mm -hmm. Reason being is because we really missed two years of Selangor Champions League and okay, teams who qualified. The teams who have qualified for the 2020 new season has has waited for a very long time for this opportunity. So from what I've gathered, uh, it's, it's about feeling, fulfilling uh, the wants of, of the affiliates, lah, you know, mm -hmm. because they, they want to compete. So I think Selangor uh, FA have, have done a tremendous job listening to the affiliates and wanting to, to, to continue this. At the same time, from a, from a, from a far perspective, uh, this, this is what I realized uh, in the car the other day, I mean, some, oh, maybe the reason why at the same time they want to do two Selangor Champions League this year, not only to... Uh, fulfill uh, the needs of the clubs and the community of Pesimoto, but at the same time too, to maintain the value of the competition. Okay. Mm. Yeah, right. because it's, it's really been two years since we had a Selangor Champions League. So uh, if, if, you know, as a competition owner or even as a potential investor, you know, you disappear for three years, do I still want to invest the same amount of money to your competition after three years? Mm-hmm. Uh, so that, that's from a business near perspective. Like I, so in a way, uh, this one is not official from FAS government. Like I'm speaking on my own interpretation. Mm -hmm. okay, uh, okay. Maybe, maybe that's also another reason why Sangu Champions League uh, is, is continuing. is to maintain uh, the value and also growth so that in the future, we can have more quality broadcasting. The, the competition have more quality broadcasting. The competition has more quality talents, uh, like commentators, interviewers, and, and so on and so forth. Like my role in 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 the Selangor Champions League uh, since 2019 is that uh, I actually take care of the commentators in the talent. Uh, mm -hmm. I have a background in theatre, so I actually spoke to Nabil, uh, the side gen uh, of of uh, of uh, the the side gen of Selangor uh, of Selangor. Check idea, uh, Nabil. Um, you know, I I written him uh, an official official letter saying that look. Uh, can I take care of the of the media talent uh, for 2019? And he said, no problem. Uh, take care of them semua too. Then I brought in Descart Hill and Sally Bernard, who were part of was a part of MFL Productions to give a workshop. And weekly, I have an upload and download session with the commentators. You know, two of them uh, are, are, are part of are, 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 are with Astro right now. Ayman Rozizam and uh, one Kader Azwa. Yep, yep. You know, so grassroots is important to to feed talents you got to the mainstream media 
uh, at the same time pun it's also about giving back jugaklah so uh, it's about itulah idea and seven brother it's all about giving opportunities and and pointing people to the right direction mm. uh, and and right opportunities so uh that's also one of, that's one of my roles lah in uh, Selangor Champions League and of uh, so FA Selangor lah uh, for un, uh, of officially unofficially lah kan uh, <laughs> as as a as a community partner lah uh, as a community partner so the reason why we we as Panabola Sepak sign on as a community partner to uh, the, the not only the Selangor Champions League but the Women's Super League is because okay uh, community partner is very vague i understand uh, however uh the 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 roles of a community partner is actually okay we talk to the competition we ask the competition what do they uh, need and we we give the competition what do we have you know so for example panabola sepa we have uh, large twitter following uh what else uh, we have resources in terms of talent in terms of you know we have a graphic designer we have uh we have we have access to people who can do work uh in terms of stats collection and mc commentators and so on and so forth so we we speak with them you know how can we work together apa semua tu so that's uh, that's how we become community partners so mm-hmm. like for the first few Selangor Champions League i told them okay utilize our our twitter account we we were growing 10 15 10 20 000 followers so give you the 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 much impressions and engagement as possible number one then as time goes on and we we found out that twitter kind of become a bit of obsolete semua tu and they can stand on their own through their social media media accounts Uh, we find other ways how to synergize like for me like i told you i jaga the wrong, I, i jaga the talents the, the commentators the mcs you know how how do we uh, take care of them uh, mm-hmm. how do we increase their values and also give them opportunities uh, and also give them confidence because usually when people started to commentate to semua tu they get really nervous uh, to commentate their first five games for example you know how do i as a macam so called teacher cikgu lah kan to guide them on how to become uh, better commentators and also uh, telling them remember your final product is actually not your world cup game government your final product is your retirement game mm-hmm. so you're constantly evolving your commentary member uh, your your commentary skills is how do we uh, make sure they're more uh, apa streamline much more Uh, responsible because usually uh, I I notice this is a social media trend lah that I've I've been noticing for the last maybe five years again that people favor um, apa uh, popularity over responsibility that shouldn't be the way it should be you should favor anyone who values responsibility over pop- popularity has a very good uh, place in my book because mm-hmm. you want to you 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 have a duty to the responsibilities that you have. Uh, maybe as a as an organizer, as a commentator, as a as a referee or whatever, to be responsible to what you are entrusted, mm-hmm. you know, because popularity, you know, if, when you favor popularity, you only have a short burst mm. of, of of pleasure. Yep, But being yep. responsible, you have a longer uh, increments lah, because you you are working towards something even bigger than than ourselves. It's something that can last the test of time lah, basically. Correct, it's a legacy. Mm, correct, correct. Mm. I mean, it's nice to see that how with through Selangor Champions League, in a way, is we're not just talking about talent on the field, but it's also allowing talent from outside of the field to be exposed as well. Like correct. you just mentioned, commentator, referees, uh, I don't know, groundskeeper, maybe uh, yeah, graphic designer, stadium maintenance, or whatever you know. Because I think I think it didn't. We always forget that football isn't just about the 22 guys that are kicking ball on the field. Mm. It's everybody else in order to make. Uh, you know, like when we watch on TV, a Champions League final, lah, kata gana. We it's always focus on what's going on in the field, but we don't realize to put up the entire show. It, it requires everybody, the commentator, media, uh, broadcasters, uh, even the fans, and everybody plays a role. I mean, it's wonderful that, in a way, Slango Champions League exposes all these various. Uh, I mean, all these various dynamics. Hmm. Okay. Like, I'm like, I'm pretty sure, like everyone who follows follows me on my personal Twitter Twitter account, I always like noted that no talents. We shouldn't be focused 100% on the pitch. Pitch. We should be focusing people who are off the pitch, like what you say. Memang heads on lah. Not only there's all job opportunities as footballers, there's job opportunities as commentators, match commissioners, physiotherapists. So I mean, you know, it, it's it's so wide, you know, and it's just that orang terampa, and you can create a, an economy around all these different elements, you know. And at the same time, 
you know, uh, one thing really lovely about Selangor Champions League, it really it helps you expose uh, SMEs, you know, because mm-hmm. like uh, all these comp- all these schemes, they get sponsors through, uh, you know, physio- uh, physiotherapists, small businesses, you know, kedai makan or whatever like that, and they put it on the jerseys. And there's, there's a lot of pride of being a part of Selangor Champions League. One thing I've noticed, Brother Steven, mm-hmm. for over maybe, ever since 2017, I've, because I've attended all the briefings except for the first language Champions League briefing, I've always noticed that the teams sebenarnya tak nak, tak, they don't care. Uh, sorry for speaking Malay lah, but sure, sure, no problem. Don't, they don't care. They don't care about the prize money anymore. They what they care is about being a part of the competition mm-hmm. and go as far as possible, and also making it hard for their opponents to win a game. You know, so that's the mentality of most teams who enter Selangor Champions League. Mm. So they have a sense of pride of when they qualify Selangor Champions League. They have an even greater sense of pride representing their community, the, re, re, representing their affiliate members or, or, and, and so on and so forth. So, and their, their sponsors, you know. So they don't really care so much about, about the prize money because, uh, again, that's something that I, I noticed over time. And so I'm like, eh. Because I, I, I thought uh, when during the launch the other day, at uh, Sunway, uh, Sunway Hotel, I realized that macam, oh, oh wow, it's been since 2017, I noticed that, you know, whenever uh, whoever is emceeing the events, mula and check out pasal price money, apa semua tu, the teams never really talk about the price money. They always talk about the rules of the competition to make sure that it's fair for everyone. They talk about uh, macam development, how do we develop certain players and so on and mm-hmm. so forth. You know, they talk about uh, players, they talk about their, their physios and so on and so forth. So those are the kind of chatters that's been going on between the management, the coaches, and even the players. So, like, mm-hmm. imagine, uh, like, they already got the sponsors to, to pay uh, allowance or whatever to the players and also whatever. But, you know, the price money to them is secondary. So, mm. being proud, being a part of the competition, the pride of being inside the competition is like minimum primary. Lah. So, mm. before the pandemic, if I recall correctly, there was between 40 to 60 teams that tried to compete to make sure to, that they get into Selangor Champions League via the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Mm. So imagine how many more people who, who memang nak, 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 nak die-die masuk, nak, nak, nak memang die-die masuk lah. <laughs> mm. Wonderful, wonderful. That's, that's a nice spirit by the way. Mm. Now, in a recent tweet, you just, you did mention that only, of course, this is, a, I mean, we have to go back a little bit, back further because uh, as everybody know, our Harimau Malaya didn't do well in the recent EFS to kick up. Mm-hmm. And recently, of course, under 23 also fed poorly. And you did mention that only grassroots football can save Malaysian football. I just okay, want... uh, any, any, any context? Is it Padam Malaysia or is it Brother Carl? Is it, is it my admin or is it me? <laughs> I okay. think, I'm not too sure. I think it's Brother Carl. So I'm guessing okay, it's it should you. Be me, it should be me. <laughs> it should be me. So, I mean, uh, maybe briefly can elaborate. What do you mean by that? Because... You know, I, I've, I've, ever since my admin took over from, from me, uh, from taking care of Padabula Sipap account, mm-hmm. I, 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 I see things a bit more clearly. Not say these days, lah, but for ever since he took over. Because I don't really deal with the professional stuff anymore. Yeah, I do get updates from my team and the admin semua tu, oh, uh, uh, JDT menang, okay, alright, cool. Uh, Kedah menang, okay, cool. I get those mm-hmm. updates. And mm-hmm. just so that I, I can speak with you or whatever lah about any of the recent games semua tu. But uh, the thing about during the pandemic that was so lovely is that uh, when things got really tough, people got together. Mm-hmm. People got together. People who, who, who we fought on the pitch and off the pitch more too got together. Mm-hmm. And we wanted to get football back. Yeah. Not only football, sports back. So mm-hmm. we, all, we all got together. We, we, we put our, our, our differences aside and we just came together. It was like, look, we need... YB, we need to get sports back because uh, this is the amount that we are losing. Uh, this, is the, this is the economical amount that we're losing. And then this is the social amount that we're losing. What I mean by social, meaning the uh, mental health, the yep. emotional health aspect. Uh, then we're not even talking about the physical, uh, physical health block because physical health, imagine the first few months of the pandemic was quite rough because all of us needed to exercise at home. We, really, we, we didn't even move much, and, and so on and so forth. So uh, the, 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 the last two years of, of this pandemic, um, when, when the pandemic started until when football reopened uh, in September, it was really wonderful seeing a lot of people coming together, 
we 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 were able to meet with uh, YB Rizal Merikan, the then sports minister, twice to talk about how do we reopen back uh, football, how do we reopen back sports, and then we also heard from their concerns about reopening up Pusmo Two. We heard KKM the reasons why they don't want to reopen sports up Pusmo Two, and so on and so forth. And uh, you know, it was a very good back and forth in order to whatever uh, to. Uh, get sports reopened, but however, you know, hopes dissipated when you know uh, around this time last year the kids just went crazy lah, like, and mm, then yeah, obviously yeah. the 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 the, the vaccination yeah, program really helped a lot uh, to justify uh, the reopening of of sports. You know, so when we see all these people who again, when you look at all the people young young fought together like myself, Izri Nabil, uh, Nazri Abu Bakar, Mutiara. Uh, Mutiara, Adam, Faiz Bobai, you know, like so many people, you know, Dr. Azim who has been helping us a lot, you know, Anaf, Izham, so many people, you know, we, we came collectively together to, you know, you know, bang up the drums, you know, saying that, hey, what about us, what about us, every sector is reopening but not sports, sports is always the first to be closed, last to be reopened, yep. you know, so imagine if you have to have, if we have this, this, this great honesty of wanting to carry out responsibilities from the grassroots onwards and then it, it slowly builds up towards the professional media side our our our, our football our, not only football our sports media ecosystem uh in the long run will be so 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 good so much in a way I'm, just, I'm i'm standing by on what i'm saying the future of malaysian football future of malaysian sports is through grassroots sports it's like how do we empower how do we get investors to invest in them how do we because as you as you noted earlier, Kate, uh, Raja Pemin, all these guys who have wonderful administrative talents, you know, how do we brush up and polish even great, even more administrative talents who who never who have never been discovered? As we said, of the pitch pun ada talent juga. Not only mm-hmm. commentators, commentators even, but uh, there are administrative talents, organizers, you know, uh, yep. un, un, untapped. Uh, yeah. administrative talents who who wants to work in sports mm-hmm. so how do we polish them juga so still uh, how, how how do we you know uh, get all these people together it's a very tough battle uh, to 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 get people to look because uh, to be honest it's, um, it, it's tiring uh, it, it's a long battle to to get people uh, in, invested in grassroots sports grassroots football but I do believe that the future is is in grassroots and community football, uh, grassroots side, in, in totality grassroots because that's the future, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, that can save Malaysian sports because when you take care of the grassroots, pool of talent on the pitch and off the pitch, tak ada masalah lah, tak akan, tak akan ada masalah. It's just mm-hmm. how do we manage uh, to get the best out of everyone. Mm-hmm. I hope that answers the question. Lah. Sorry for, for always going on a tangent. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. I mean, I mean, you're very passionate about this. So, you know, it's nice to hear every uh, whatever that comes out from yourself. So, you know, that's that's what we want to hear. And I'm sure that's what listeners out there want to hear as well. Mm. And lastly, of course, you know, now that you mentioned what grassroots can do, I mean, it can save leash sport. But what would you like to uh, what would you like to see from the sports association to come forward? And get involved in this. I mean, in what aspect would you like them to come forward? Hmm, itulah. Which I'm like, obviously, uh, 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 you know, as much as we we like those, uh, some like, uh, strategy sukan twenty sixty, you know, whatever. <laughs> can, you know, please before any association or government officials or even whatever lah, and wants to announce all that, please talk to the, to the community first. Talk to the people who are on the ground who are doing the work. You know, um, who are doing the work of Pesmo to get feedback of what can we all collectively do for the long run. You know, then you create that 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 so-called uh, strategy, double or whatever you want to call it, lah. Mm-hmm. You know, because obviously in 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 administrative, political, me whatever, you need to have that to sell sell things to investors, like that, because that's the marketing strategy. Mm-hmm. But as the first important step is actually opening up dialogues to all these communities because I, because the the reason why we all fought really hard during the pandemic is because we felt that like our voices weren't heard. Mm-hmm. So I think any governing bodies of Pismutu, they need to go on the ground uh, and, and, find, and find them. And some of them, you'd be surprised, they are not on social media. You know, there are communities out there who do not know how to use social media, but they are doing fantastic work. 
mm-hmm. it's just that they don't they don't have the they did they didn't have the the, the coverage mm-hmm. you know we have we've, we've becoming too centric in clan valley so we need to go beyond that so you know which like those who have authorities uh K- B- B- kbs ke fam ke bam ke whatever need to have a, a, a department where they actually go to the ground and like stand, get feedback on on what can how can we improve badminton how can we improve football how can we improve rugby how can we improve all this all these things you know mm-hmm. so getting people to to be heard getting get feeling that they are heard and also things are taking are being done in order to improve things pun is great lah so uh, i had a, i i i spoke this the other day on on another uh, platform and it was quite funny lah uh, that 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 this happened so sorry for talking about politics everyone but it's actually <laughs> it's actually really important uh, that that i highlight this so recently a youth party uh, announced their excos the executive council members mm-hmm. okay so during that weekend i've been contacted 11 times whatsapp and call mm-hmm. and this 11 people are from the the sporting grassroots sporting community and they are part of political parties i would not name name who who mm-hmm. they are because of discretion but uh, they have allowed me to to share this lah uh, so each of them asked the same question and then to be honest i was like did they coordinate this to 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 chuk to chuk chuk me ke apa benda lah kan mm-hmm. uh, but in ultimately what each of them said was betul Uh, they asked me, Carl, uh, which political party has an exco or even a department uh, dedicated to sports? Because usually in a political party, in the executive council members, apa semua, they have like okay for pendidikan, they have they have they have, they have a department that that handles the mm-hmm. uh, apa, the, the the education aspect. They have, yep, yep. They have department to handle the, the the tourism aspect, the defense aspect, the the military, the whatever lah kan. Mm-hmm. But is there And, and youth and so on and so forth but is there one for sports and i told them because they are they themselves are, poli- are, are, are political grassroots members or uh, even otai semua i told them it's a very good question can you please ask them because since you are a party member mm-hmm. you know and it is true um because when we look at history you know obviously the ministry of youth and sports is like macam it's something like you know like you know i want to sport i want i want to Sorry to say this lah, but I want someone who 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 is contesting an election or even uh, becomes a a senator or whatever lah kan. I want someone who says that I want that ministry post. I want I want to be ministry of sports, a uh, youth and sports. You mm-hmm. know, you know. But but saying that we separate ministry of sports, uh, that's a different conversation for another day lah. But we need we need that 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 one people, that one person together with a lineup because the thing about uh, a cult of personality. Is that it can it can become a dictatorship, you know? So you need to have a, like a lineup of people to say, okay, this is the team that we're going in to save Malaysian sports. Mm-hmm. Not just one person, maybe one person to the menteri apa semua tu, mm-hmm. but that menteri punya role is 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 A B C D E. The mm-hmm. secretary punya role is D F G whatever, mm-hmm. you know? And then the the executive for 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 uh. Apa, education in sports is, is whatever, so it has mm-hmm. to be a lineup of of people, uh, apa, uh, to to try to change things from from a top down or even a bottom up new approach. So for all these political parties, Mutu, I have to ask them. So so if anyone is a member of a political party listening here, you know, what is the plan for sports? Mm-hmm. You know, because like, yeah, because like yeah, we hate sports in politics, but. Uh, What about what about the other way around? Sports, apa? Uh, whether we hate politics in sports, but what about the other way around? Sports in politics. <laughs> okay, uh, you know that, that, that's a that's a very interesting way for you to put it. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I mean, basically, what we need is uh, basically what I'm saying. What we want is is a uh, potential YBs who already have in mind that their vision to make Malaysia a better better place through sports. Mm. And not, I mean, of course, yes. Everybody will talk about the economy, defense, and all that. I mean, we understand all that how it's important. But we want we want potential politicians who, or maybe currently whoever they are, to have this mindset that whereby you know I want to get involved in politics because I want to make Malaysia a better place through sports. Am I right to say that, Carl? One hundred and ten percent. And also, how do we package that with education, with health, with economics, mm. you know, and all this uh, tourism, you know, culture. You know, so we need to have like a very good uh, uh, group of 
individuals who memang passion in sports who wants to be uh, policy makers you know macam for example you know if we can have uh, a team of people who say okay this this is our plan our plan is to make sure that uh, there's, there's massive sporting participation across malaysia and then, and then obviously we want to obviously the, the delicious words to be like okay go medal in whatever whatever lah but the steps towards that you know what are the really realistic steps you know i would really much enjoy if that's a that if that's a sports minister say judge me every one every 50 days you judge me because we can keep them accountable to whatever they have done within every 50 days mm-hmm. mm. okay this is, this is really cool series on netflix called uh, designated survivor kitu sazlin is in it to mm. anyone out there it's really good it's a really good series about uh, how politics and also uh integrity works so in a way i'm i'm kind of living on an ide- idealistic in a world where you know things are run nicely up as motto but this is the reality that we that we we need to save malaysian sports we need to have a a, a line of people who can get together and then obviously they have to be funded somehow via uh membership ke atau sponsorship whatever to 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 teruskan dalam kerja because some again uh, one thing about sports administra- uh, administration is not really a lucrative and attractive job so how do we make it attractive uh macam i said earlier like uh, all these people have lives you know so we need to somehow mind be mindful and balance out everyone's careers like in, in a sense so uh but ultimately the, the the aim and the goal is to have like a memang group group good line and progressive leaders to macam uh, basically I'm, what I'm trying to say, we need like a uni 18 but sports. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm. all right. Well, well summed it up, my friend. Mm. Okay, Kyle. So, any last word from yourself before we wrap up this podcast? Uh, I would like to apologize if I I I went uh, too philosophical. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay, man. It's okay. I mean, see, I I I myself personally uh, enjoy the two way conversation we're having here. Mm. Likewise, likewise, even really enjoy everything that you guys have done on the Bola Bola Show. Uh, the, the the people that you brought in and also the educational and informational aspect that you bring in to Malaysian football. So I uh, from from the bottom of my from the deepest parts of my heart and my soul, I really like to thank you guys for keeping up with good job. You guys are in my second three years three years on. Well, we started uh, basically I think it was like last week Friday we s- sort of celebrated our second anniversary. There you go. So, so congratulations yeah. on that. So uh, we are somehow rather. I mean, in terms of our success story, we can only say that uh, we are glad to be around at the pandemic time when people really needed some avenue for entertainment to listen to something, and you know we we just provide you know uh, whatever available because the platform is free, Spotify, YouTube, and all that. Hmm. So that's the little thing that we can do lah on our. And part. you guys are climbing the charts, so I I noticed on Spotify. So <laughs> oh <laughs> okay, we didn't, I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> keep it up. My admin is the one that told me about it. And I was like, okay, I should tell this to Steven on 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 record. <laughs> wow wow wow. Okay okay, this is like Billboard chart man, top forty. <laughs> <laughs> so all right all right. Work. Thank uh-huh. you so much, Carl. Thank you so much yeah, for your kind you. words. Oh. Uh, the then that too lah. Uh, keep up the good work. Hopefully we do have. Uh, you know, a group of leaders leading Malaysian sports lah. So I don't know who who they are. You know, they could be among us. They could could not. They maybe not yet been conceived yet. But I hope that we do have a good lineup of people, uh, honest and responsible people to take up Malaysian sports and you know, uh, maximize the poten- do their best to maximize the potential of everyone out there. Because again, on the pitch and off the pitch, we have so many good talent who can actually do a lot of good to change football about to to change Malaysian society for the better through sports. Mm-hmm. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much, Carl. Thank you so much, Ivan. All right. And with that said, folks, we will end this week's episode of the Bola Bola Show. Thank you for listening and it's goodbye for now. <laughs>